Hello everyone, Adam here, and welcome to the 7th Gameplay Review UK Community Challenge video of 2020. Each month, the Grup community has been creating stock replicas of aircraft and spacecraft chronologically through the decades to further our understanding of aeronautics and engineering, not to mention honing our skills in Kerbal Space Program. I say spacecraft, but since we have only just reached the 1950s, there have been no real orbital spacecraft to show, that is, until now. This month's video focuses on Explorer 1, America's first satellite. Explorer 1 was launched on February the 1st, 1958 from Cape Canaveral's Launch Complex 26A. This was nearly four months after the launch of the Soviet Sputnik 1, which was the world's first artificial satellite, and three months after the launch of Laika the Dog's flight on board Sputnik 2. This would mean that Explorer 1 would become sidelined as far as space race milestones were concerned, but it was still an amazing accomplishment for the US at the time, taking the Army Ballistic Missile Agency and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory only about 84 days to modify a Jupiter Sea missile, build the Explorer 1 satellite, and combine them to make a Juno 1. With Explorer 1 flying later and being smaller than Sputnik, it would seem that the US was very far behind the USSR technologically, but in reality, this US rocket could have flown under Project Orbiter potentially up to a year before a Soviet one did. But the US initially opted to use Jupiter Seas to test re-entry heating instead of performing fully orbital missions. You see, amongst other factors, the US really wanted the USSR to set the precedent for the potential to spy from space, and so was in no major rush to be the first into orbit. They were still also focusing on their U-2 program at the time, giving even less reason to push for spy satellites. Not to mention that the US would have preferred to launch a more civilian branded project like Vanguard into orbit first, and not a paper-clipped military project like Project Orbiter. But the flight of Sputnik 1, the initial failure of Vanguard, and the public reaction to all of this pushed for Project Orbiter to be reinstated as the Explorer program, and for Explorer 1 to be launched as soon as possible so America would not lose space as far as the race for space was concerned. The flight was successful, and aside from being America's first object into orbit, it is probably most famous for leading to the discovery of the Van Allen radiation belts. We may go into more detail of course, but for now, let's take a look at the community replicas. We shall start by showing my Explorer 1 replica as an example. I made this craft back in March live on Twitch as an experiment. Now this craft is already rather out of date, and usually I like to make brand new craft for these videos, but since I've not really shared this on YouTube, I figured now would be a good excuse. Firstly, I'll point out that the main reason I made this was to experiment with the spinning drum stage, just to see if it was even possible. Two minutes before launch, Explorer 1's upper stage tub spins up to 560 revolutions per minute. During flights, this would increase to 650, and then 750 RPM to avoid any resonant vibrations. I had to make mine spin 10 times slower than this to stop the craft pulling itself apart, but other than that, the test was successful. I chose to make the scale rather large in order to maintain core control over the tiny satellite, either for extended testing, extra mission goals, or just because I know some people are not used to opting for spin stabilization. For reference, Explorer 1 was only 6 inches in diameter, and mine is four times larger than that. Even though this really does make my vehicle far too large, it does mean anyone can get this thing into orbit and even beyond. However, I will show you what I would consider realism mode so you can see the stages that use spin stabilisation to get around the fact the upper stages had no other means of attitude correction in real life. I have also removed a lot of the fuel, otherwise this thing would end up a jewel. After main engine burnouts, the first stage cuts into two, the assembly coast to apoapsis for the circularization burn. The coast stage houses the primary control module, and this is used to keep the craft stable and pointed prograde. Just before apoapsis, the upper stages fire off in sequence. 
In Chaos P, once this is staged, you should turn off all SAS and just let go of the steering wheel. However, like I said before, this craft was also created so you can engage manual control of Explorer 1 and enable engine gimbling and refiring, meaning you can fly this anywhere if you really want to. In real life, these three stages were made out of clusters of scaled down Sargent missiles, which were chosen due to their proven reliability. The drum stage housed 11 of them, the next stage had three, and one more was mounted under Explorer itself. This section of the rocket was referred to as the tub. I only have sources on the drum and upper stage spinning, but not the second last stage, so I just left that to act freely. In KSP, if the torque is still enabled, it will counter-rotate, and if it is off, it will not spin. Either way, the spinning upper stage still keeps the craft pointing straight. Most, if not all, rockets slowly drift off course, and often use gimbaled engines or some other kind of reaction control system. However, you can also just spin a rocket. You could say that it will still drift off course, but equally around 360 degrees, making all of the deviations cancel each other out, and though you may wobble a little, you should maintain a predominantly pro-grade attitude. And there we are, we have achieved orbit. Again, this craft is rather large, however, this did mean I was able to add a bunch of details. I managed to do things like add the four thermometers in roughly the right places, and notice the black and white striped nose. In real life, this was to help with thermal balancing. Right, that's more than enough of mine, let's move on to two community submissions. Not only are they both great examples of Explorer 1, but they also show how much KSP has changed just over the last few months. The first one was sent in by Than Ninja, and like mine, was made a fair few months ago now, long before 1.10 was even anticipated, meaning this crowd file is also already rather out of date, but I will go into that in a bit. For now, let us just enjoy this slick craft get into orbit. This entire craft was made using only 69 parts compared to my 662 parts, so it runs really smoothly, which is always a massive bonus in KSP when you are dealing with replicas. This craft uses reaction wheels to spin up the tub assembly, so we will get to see another example of spin stabilization. This time, I casually disable SAS, spin it up, and let it off. This version is rather simplified compared to Explorer 1, but hopefully, this example is so clean, everyone watching should be able to understand what spin stabilization is all about now. Like mine, this craft is four times larger than the real life counterpart. Not only does this mean you can retain core control, but also that the mic'd SRB looks just like a scaled sergeant rocket, which I love. Right, we are in orbit again. Thanks to Dan Ninja for sending this in. I'm sorry I was sitting on it for so long, but at the same time, I think it's a great opportunity to show how far KSP has come in just a few months. Check out this one-to-one -one scale replica of Explorer 1, made by the 18th Doctor. As you can see, there is great usage of the custom decals you can create using flags now. It doesn't just look the part, but it also performs as close to perfect as is possible, considering it is made at this scale. On top of that, everything about this craft is very intuitive, which I love. For example, the tub spin is activated by the throttle, so there is no way you can miss it. There isn't a way to add a control module to this tiny little 1 to 1 scale satellite in stock Kerbal Space Program, which is perfect in a way, because this means spin stabilization is the only option we have here. From here, this craft uses a cow controller, and it has to, with no room for a probe core, it's the only way of finishing off the staging. Explorer 1 achieved an orbit of 358 kilometers by 2550 kilometers, and this replica achieves this as a KSP analog almost perfectly, absolutely fantastic replica. So far, all of these Kerbal test launches were shot during daytime, but the real flight of Explorer 1 was after sunset. I think I will end this episode with a Grook style montage of the mission using the 18th Doctor's replica launched from a stock redstone launch stand I added for fun. A single rocket to which we will add a cylindrical section to contain the instrumentation and a nose cone. This will be the final stage. It will be placed into an orbit and become our satellite. 
when the high-speed stages are fully assembled, they'll look something like this model. This is the high power transmitter that radiates 60 milliwatts of power and will operate for about two weeks. It will tell us the temperature of the outer surface of the payload and its own operating temperature. It will also relay information from an impact microphone that measures the frequency of collisions with small meteorites. In addition, it will transmit cosmic ray measurements. Both transmitters operate continuously throughout the orbit, and each will carry four simultaneous channels of telemetering. The expected lifespan of this unit is about two months, so when our high-power transmitter's batteries are exhausted, this low-power unit will continue to operate for another six weeks. Amateur radio operators will be able to pick up the signals from the high-power unit, but transmissions from the low-power transmitter which radiates only about 10 milliwatts, can only be received by very sensitive equipment such as Minitrack or Microlock. Remember, this process is forever ongoing, so if you would like to build craft files with us, then please do join the Discord. Thank you very much to our Patrons. My page is still in its first phase, but thanks to you guys, I'm just about ready to legitimately take a day off work once a month so I can work towards making more videos and content. If you would like to show your support for this channel via YouTube, then please do hit the join button, Thanks to everyone who has done so thus far. Please like and share this video, and if you do subscribe, make sure to hit the bell icon.